Hello, I'm at Conneaut Lake this morning with some archaeologist friends, and we're going to roast some rocks and use those rocks to boil some water. Uh, my name is Christina Gogler. I'm a grad, uh, second year grad student at IUP. I'm currently working on my thesis, which is looking at um, ex ex fire cracked rock that was made at three different Monongahela sites. And then I'm experimentally creating fire cracked rock through stone boiling and having a rock lined hearth to see if our the rock that we create during these experiments looks similar to the rock that we're finding at these different archaeological sites. This indent right there, put your shelf, yeah, right there. But what you need to do is create a side one, half, half moon right here. Yeah. All right, so we dug a uh, pit. It's a, this pit's a little bit bigger than we would normally because we didn't have quite enough flat stone, but we essentially dug about a four foot wide pit and about half a foot deep, lined it with some flat stone. We uh, dug a little bump out that the pot could sit in, also lined that with flat stone for the rock, the pot to sit on. We started a fire, got it nice and hot, and then began adding different, what we were calling lots of rocks, which are just groupings of six to four rocks. And then we just began um, recording the temperature of the rocks and adding them to the water and we kept rotating them from the fire into the water and uh, until we got the water to a boil and that's what we were considering one uh, one session, I forget what we were saying, calling it, but um, and so and then we're just keeping track the whole time of the temperature of the water, the temperature of the rocks as they come in and out, um, noting if there's any coloration, uh, discoloration of the rocks, any cracking, and just kind of taking notes and pictures during the whole process. I'm just happy that you guys are all helping me and that Kenora is helping me. Um, okay, is that good? Yep, that's <laughs> okay. great. My, my name's Kenora Tigre. Um, I came from, I was born in Cherokee, North Carolina. Um, I grew up on um, the Cherokee Reservation till the age of 10. And then when I was 10 years old, I got to go live on the uh, Pine Ridge Reservation on my father's side of the family for another four years. And um, then um, we became urbanized and, uh, and I joined the Navy and um, you know, I served for 22 years, and then I came out, and um, we needed help getting food from the government warehouses to the reservations nationwide, all 48 states and even Alaska, and they needed truck drivers, and um, that's how I got into uh, transportation and driving truck, and I met my husband, and that's how I wound up being here in lovely Pennsylvania. <laughs> I've, I'm... The oldest of 13 children, and I was not able to have children, but this is a great honor of being able to pass this on to people that can do something with it because I have no one to leave this to. Um, I, I love teaching uh, the ways, and I do everything from gardening to pottery to beadwork uh, to gar uh, outdoor cooking the old way, and that's what led us here today. So it's a great honor. Thank you. My grandmother lived to be 106 years old, and when I was, I remember this from being seven, eight years old, because um, at that time we could go, um, we'd get up in the morning and have run of the Smoky Mountain and um, do our things, but we were always going to Grandma because we couldn't wait to go visit her, see what she was doing for the day. And this is what she taught us, because this was her way of cooking for almost, 80 to 100 years. She stopped gardening when she was 100, and by then I was out in the world, and I didn't know if she continued, but I remember being seven, eight years old that she taught us this about how to dig the pit, how to get the rocks, gather the right rocks, and um, be able to line the pit, and then get the right rocks for our pots, because we had to make sure that we got pots that were I mean, stones that were small enough that we could handle easily, but not crack our pots either and, and break through if we dropped one accidentally. Because what she used, she used um, hand, deer antlers. She'd get a pair of deer antlers and they would create, they would create 
forks, like forks, and you just gather, just scoop into the fire and pick them up like this and put your stone in there and then put it on the inside of the bowl and just let it slide down so it wouldn't um, fracture the pot or anything. And we just take that in and out like that. And uh, she also had moose hide. She had pieces of good sized moose hide so that if we had to get something really going fast and hard, what we would do is um, one side uh, would have the deer antlers and putting them in the pot, one would be taking them out. And then um, once they got heated up, because she'd have the circle, full circle, it'd be divided in four directions. And she would tell us one would be on the north side, one would be on the south side. It was our responsibility to keep those rocks hot. And then if we couldn't get the antlers, then we grabbed the moose hide and pick them up like that and slide them in. So we were always competing to get the deer antlers, needless to say, because it was easier and, <laughs> and stuff. And sometimes the deer hide would catch on fire around the fringes and everything. But that's what she taught us. And she, she practiced that throughout most of her life, I understand. And, it, you know, as um, technology came along and she started seeing an easier way, it made it easy for her. I know she got some cast iron stuff and started using that because she was a potter in her earlier years and she made a lot of her own pots to be able to cook in and everything. And she knew what thickness she needed for what size of pot because the bigger the pot, you needs to be thicker. And, you know, she had a big feast of like, you know, Thanksgiving or something. I mean, we didn't necessarily celebrate Thanksgiving like that, but any special occasions for us for ceremonies and stuff, she'd have to get the big pots out and she would have two divots on either side have it going to be able to serve everybody at the same time with a good substantial stew. Mostly it was stew. It was venison or um, rabbit, um, anything wild that we caught we'd have. And um, she would use that and all the, she had a beautiful garden with corn, beans, and squash, the three sisters way. And, um, you know, anything that she could grow, she, she was a medicine woman. So that led to a lot of herbs and natural things that she go forage in the woods for mushrooms and, and different herbs and stuff that, you know, that we, t we, d we you know, sometimes they're m disappearing and they're not here anymore. Um, but she would find things that she could cook. Wild ramps was her favorite to season her food because that's a natural salt substitute. So she, that's how she cooked. She was all natural. <laughs> One more. One more. She get us up there, guys. Is this 20? 48. Oh, it's 48? boiling now. Yeah. 200? There it is. Is it boiling? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. Look at the it tap is. of the water. Looks great. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Awesome. Cheers. Amanda. Cheers. 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 Here's the Nana. Let's see how much he did such a Kahina, Wahi CD, Kyla G, Bonquata. Are you going to tell us what you said? I said, thank you for guiding me through my life and giving back to those who want to learn. And now I'm the teacher. Oh, oh cool. Yeah. Yes, that's okay. The temperature at the top isn't going to be necessarily the, the temperature at the base. I wonder yeah. if I could just thing. hang a thermometer or something. Well, here. that might yeah. be the thing, but you didn't get your stones. we got to do our stones. Oh, around the base? Around the base. Oh, okay.